Hi, I'm Jeff Graham, a product support technician with EpiRock. Uh, today I'll be going over how to rebuild a high pressure accumulator. Uh, this is a 1.5 liter high pressure accumulator for our HB breakers. Uh, this starts with the uh, HB3100 and up to the HB10000. Uh, assuming that this uh, accumulator has been blown, uh, we want to use a caution uh, and treat it as if it is still currently charged. So we can put the high pressure accumulator adapter on and check it. Now we're going to be uh, installing the high pressure accumulator with the, the cap on it. Normally you'd want to charge the, the uh, adapter with pressure before you check it, but we're, not, we're just checking to see if it actually has a charge. So we're going to use the adapter. We'll push the T down, make sure that it sets into the Phillips filling valve screw, and we'll open it up about two and a half turns, and then verify if there's any pressure. And also we can open the bleed screw on the side. It appears that this accumulator is drained. So we'll tighten the screw back up. Pull the T handle up. Remove the high pressure accumulator adapter. Then we use a regular filled screwdriver. Now sometimes you have you may have to uh, use a impact driver and a hammer to break the screw loose uh, if you're not able to get it with the high pressure accumulator adapter. So you can use that, or you just use a regular screwdriver. Remove the filling screw. And we'll be removing the shell bolts. There's 16 total. That's an M14. Always do these by hand. Uh, it's uh, important not to use an impact because you reduce the life of the shell bolts by using an impact. So break them all loose by hand. And once you've gotten all the bolts broken loose, then you could use an impact just to use them to speed up, speed things up a little bit, just to remove these bolts. Uh, if you don't have a vise large enough to put the high pressure accumulator in, you are able to use the, the breaker as a, uh, a way to secure the accumulator. Just make sure that you've completely drained the accumulator before you start to remove the bolts. And I always recommend that you just loosen all of the bolts just to make sure that just in case there was any pressure trapped in there. Now that we've loosened all of the bolts, I'm going to remove the bolts. Uh, you can mark the the orientation of the, the cover to the base. Uh, there is some stamping marked into the high pressure accumulator. If you can make sure that those are lined up, that'll help assist when putting them back to all together in the same place. <coughs> Move the top cover. Always be careful when you're setting down the top cover that you do not damage the, uh, the button that the high pressure accumulator adapter attaches to. We can remove the diaphragm and also the backup frame. You can expect the diaphragm for any wear or, or tears uh, and maybe uh, help you identify what uh, caused the high pressure accumulator to fail. So now we're going to reassemble the high pressure accumulator. Uh, the diaphragm, when it comes in the kit, there is a kit available. You don't have to buy the individual pieces. It comes with a diaphragm a backup ring, a filling screw, and the O-rings to reinstall the high pressure accumulator. Uh, when you're installing the high pressure accumulator, the silver button on the bottom goes face down. You install that. Um, make sure that you don't need to uh, install any grease on that. You can just install them dry, but make sure it's clean. Everything's uh, ready to be assembled. When you install the backup ring, there's a, a pointed edge. Uh, it's, it's more like a wedge. That will go down on the back side of the diaphragm. That'll help hold it in place. And when you install the cover, you want to make sure that you assemble it so that it's even and holds that the diaphragm in place up against the wedge. You can also make sure that your, your clocking marks line up. and then reinstall your bolts. Now that we've reassembled the high pressure accumulator, we've installed the bolts, we run them in by hand, 
to make sure that they, we at least set the upper cover down evenly. And then we're gonna start with our initial torque. So we'll torque in a crisscross pattern across the accumulator to 35 foot pounds. And as we're, we're tightening down, you'll, you'll feel that it's got a, there's a little bit of room to tighten the bolts, to tighten the bolts until they start to touch and then torque. And then we will torque to our final torque of 190. I normally like to mark each, each bolt as I torque them. For more information, please contact your Epiroc Service Center or your dealer.